Hello, guys. Um, there we go. Uh, first of all, while, while everyone's coming on board, I want to say that uh, you should all head over to former Neighbours alum uh, Chris Milligan's Insta page. Uh, we'll also put a link in the Neighbours bio too. Uh, he's been doing some work up in Townsville uh, over the weekend uh, to help the flood victims. He's got a timber flooring company. Um, and so he's supplying a whole house off the back of, uh, off his own back to, uh, up there uh, with timber flooring, but he's wanting to help a whole bunch more. So he's got a My Cause page. Um, so if you've got any money you can spare, uh, yeah, please donate uh, if you can, um, because you know they all need our help up there. Um, so that'd be great. Um, so if you're on here, after the live's done, go, uh, go to the Neighbours page, go to Chris Milligan's page. Um, and yeah, if you can help out, please do. Uh, otherwise, just share his post too, uh, just to help raise that awareness and maybe someone you know might be able to um, share some funds too. Uh, yeah, but that's, it. that's enough about the Townsville Floods and Chris Milligan. Um, how are we all? Hello, everyone who's given a wave and coming on. Um, some people who are telling me they can't make it to Mardi Gras, which I'm sad about. But yesterday was amazing. Um, if you didn't know, we were at Fair Day, which is kind of the launch pad for the month of Mardi Gras. Um, the parade is, is the finale, essentially. Um, and it was so much fun. We saw so many people. We had a big line at the front of our, our little stall. Me and Maddie were taking photos with everyone. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, but a whirlwind. We, we, we left it seven in the morning and then got back last night at like 8.30, went back to the airport at least. So, and then I was home learning lines and then I was up at 5.30 this morning to come here to do scenes. I'll show you a little bit I don't know. Um, which is why I sound like I do, um, which isn't all that great, but I'm here <laughs> and it's going well. Um, so send your questions in. Um, thank you, Renee Cook for, Renee76 Cook for donating um, to Chris. It's great. Well, to what is my cause. Um, it's much appreciated and the people of Townsville um, very much need it. So thank you for that. Um, I'm a huge fan help. What do you need help with? Oh, hello. That's what you mean. <laughs> hello. Um, hello. Hi, Emma. Um, hello, everyone from the UK. Uh, happy birthday to... Happy birthday to Ralph, who's two on Friday. That's exciting. Um... Hello, so many people. Hello, everyone. Um, who's coming on here? Uh, thank you very much. I love that you love my work. Um, hello to Ellen and Amelia. Um, start sending through some questions. Hello, everybody. I can't shout out everyone's name. Um, does Chloe get married? I don't know, maybe. That'd be fun. She'd have a very, very spectacular wedding, I think. Um, Hello, Tasmania. Uh, I don't want to just have a whole live video of just saying hello to people. I think you'd find that really boring and no one would watch another one. Um, <laughs> what's been your favourite episode to to fl film so far? Um, David's coming out storyline was really, really, really great to be a part of um, and had some really lovely scenes uh, with Tim and um, who plays Leo and, and, and Paul and Amy. Stefan and Zoe um, for that coming out stuff. So, uh, and it really, really spoke to people and really uh, has, um, from the messages I've received, uh, impacted people's lives. And so that's always a really great thing to be a part of because as an actor, um, I feel we're all sto storytellers and, and the ultimate goal is to communicate ideas and um, that kind of stuff. So uh, when you actually do that and in TV and film, you don't really get a direct response all that often when you actually get one like that and you have a really strong response uh, and have people who uh, use your storyline as courage to come out themselves, that's like that's a pretty cool thing to be a part of uh, and only goes to prove how important uh, doing stories lines like that and telling those stories and um, sharing and representing that part of the community, how, how important that really is. Um, hello to Tony's wife, Lindsay Kelly. Um, thank you for that question, Victoria Margaret Louise underscore XO. Uh, you did, you got the first question in today. Um, is Piper leaving? I don't know if that's, if that's been revealed or whether it's not, but um, I think you can check out Mav's page and get an idea from that. Uh, what's the best kept neighbor's secret? I don't know, is there any secrets kept on this show? <laughs> Seems like everything comes out 
for years before we even film it. Um, happy birthday, Queen Maddie. Um, it, well, it was it. The question is, was it awkward to be at first to be gay to be to be? I can't read. Um, I'm still learning. Was it awkward at first to be in a gay relationship with neighbours? No, I mean, uh, we. Uh, like, there's a question. You get a bit, um, which I sort of find odd in a way. Is like, you know, is it weird to be gay or is it? Uh, look, Scotty's in the background. Scotty, say hi to everybody. Yo, what's up? <laughs> um, no, it's not weird to be in a gay relationship. Um, you know, I'm straight myself. Uh, but for me, love is love, and I'm just playing a character, and part of that character uh, is that he's gay and he's attracted to men. Um, and well, the, the great thing for my character really was is that that was discovered. Mm -hmm. Scotty also loves men. He, he, he <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. Uh, but... Yeah, so it, it's just a character, part of the character trait, and so you just take that on board. And um, the character is so much more than just being gay. So um, there was a lot more. The, the, him discovering or, or, or coming to terms with his sexuality um, was really an interesting and fun thing to play. Um, but the actual just having to be a gay character doesn't really bother me. Um, but thank you for that question, Annie Reynolds. Hello to the Netherlands. Uh, it's 8.30 in the morning here. Uh, so it's a bit early, but I've been up for a few hours now, so that's all right. Uh, hello, Lucy and Dixie. Have you ever been to Brighton in the UK? I haven't been to Brighton. I was in the UK uh, la last year around Easter, um, but didn't head to Brighton, unfortunately. Uh, our, what are our work schedules like, and how far do you film in advance? So three months in advance. Defo's D. Um, yeah, we're three months in advance. The film schedules can be hectic, so... Um, like today, I you know, started really early and we have a read-through now instead of rehearsals, which will finish at 6, so I'm here from uh, 6.45 to 6 today. Um, but then tomorrow I've only got one scene, so I've only been for a couple of hours. Um, but it, it varies. You can have up to like 19 scenes that you film in a day. That's rare, um, but you can do more than 10 um, every now and then, um, if not a couple. Um, and you're in most days. You'll have an afternoon or, or morning off here and there. Um, and sometimes you're very lucky and you get a day off, but they usually call you in to do an Instagram live or something anyway. So uh, you just never know. Um, so th that's really the hardest bit with the schedule is that you have no habit. You can't go, I'll go to the gym at this time, then I'll go to the um, go to set, film for eight hours, and then I go and I can do my shopping and whatever. It's, it's no, this every single day is completely different. Um, so that's what really exhausts you. Um, is just not being able to have a schedule. So in terms of hitting the gym and that kind of stuff, it, it can be very hard and you're having to do it when you're very, very tired. Um, yeah, when is Sonia dying? Uh, stay tuned. Uh, it's some of the saddest stuff you'll ever see. Um, there, Ryan and Eve's performances are just unreal. Um, hello, everybody. Trying to read and talk, it's like a whole other skill, especially when you're reading stuff you're not talking. Um, Please make Paul and Therese together. I smush their faces, Stefan and Beck's face, I push them together all the time. But they resist me. I don't understand. It's bizarre. Um, do you think David and Aaron would make great parents? I don't know. What do you reckon? I think it would be pretty good. Uh, <laughs> will neighbours ever cast disabled actors? We have had... When I started, there was a, uh, uh, a lady who was in a wheelchair. I'm trying to remember what uh, she had. But na no, they are pursuing... Neighbours is has been and is um, really on the forefront in terms of its casting diversely uh, and the producing team is doing a very hard and um, really a lot of work to do strong casting in diverse uh, areas, whether that be disabled or of ethnic backgrounds or sexuality and that kind of stuff. Um, there is a lot of work being put in uh, on this show. Um, so it is something that really needs to be celebrated here um, because we are... Neighbours is doing a lot of work in that area, um, unlike a lot of shows on television, especially in Australia. Um, when will Neighbours air in the US, or will it air on Hulu or Netflix? Look, if you can give Hulu or Netflix a call and get us on there, I would love it, because uh, they would give us a little bit of money, which would be great. <laughs> uh, does Reggie come back? Oh, I want Timber to come back. Um, otherwise, you can follow Maddie's dog, uh, The Life of Timber. Um, over on, on Instagram, so I'm sure Maddie would appreciate it. Um, he's been di double dipping all over on this show, so he, I'm sure she wants Timmy to come back on as Reggie. Uh, who you like working with the most? Everybody. I mean, 
you you guys all you follow everyone, so you know how great everybody is. Um, but me and Maddie have a really great relationship. So does uh, so do Tim and I, um, and I've had to do a lot of work with them. And usually, it's just who you work with the most is what your most common answer is really going to be. Um, but really, working with anyone on the show is a really great thing. Uh, favorite neighbors character? I don't know. There's this David Tanaka guy. He's really great. Uh, <laughs> hello from, uh, Hull, uh, from Hull, UK. Hello to the whole of Hull. Um, how is the pet fish? The pet fish is funny because uh, because it's an animal and said it needs to be treated the same way as any other animal, like a dog or whatever. Uh, even though it's a goldfish in a fish tank, um, it still has to have breaks and it still can only be on set for a certain amount of time. So that's why the goldfish just happens to be in our bedroom all the time and you never see it ever because it's, um, even though it's a goldfish in a fish tank and moving it around is worse for it than just leaving it in the same place, we can't leave it in the same place. Um, so you don't see it too much and I think that's the best for the goldfish as well as us. Um, if I wasn't David, what character would I like to play from It's K. Clark? Um... You know, I actually auditioned for Leo as well. We, we auditioned for both roles at the same time. Um, and that was... It was a mental audition because you're having to learn a stupid amount of scenes. And then also we'd have scenes which were both David and Leo and you're having to learn both roles. Um, and that's not something you ever really have to do. You might know the other person's lines, but you generally don't have to embody them. Um, so to play a scene against a character that you're also in the mindset of is a real bizarre thing. Um... But Leo, Leo gets a lot of fun, wild, crazy uh, storylines, so that would be good because um, David is sensible a lot of the time, and that, <laughs> that, that's not that, that's hard to play. But it's um, it's not as fun sometimes. Uh, actually, Josh Haywood had just sort of answered your question, which was directly below how what was the audition pr- process like. So it was intense, and Thea McLeod, who's our uh, casting director, she said it's the hard, the most extensive audition process they've uh, done for any character on the show, which is. Um, pretty huge. We had two big days, a uh, five-hour audition, and then uh, probably another three hours, about a week or two later, um, and so many scenes. It, and we got given for the second callback, and I was flying to and from Mel- uh, from Sydney to Melbourne each day for these. Um, for the second audition, we got given like five scenes, like 24 hours beforehand, and just had to do them the next day, uh, which now doesn't seem like such a big thing because I basically do that every day, but... Um, when you haven't been working your neighbours, that is a, that's a bit of a task. Um, I am not from New Zealand. Shemani Moxi. Um, sorry, I don't know. Shemane Moxi, maybe. Um, Tim is. He is from Wellington. Um, but he probably does a great job of masking it. I, I probably have a New Zealand accent and don't even know it. Um... Who is your favourite actor, actress to film with? I sort of cover that everyone, really genuinely everyone. Um, everyone for different reasons. Um, yes, thank you, Shane. I love Mia, the little dog, my little pup. Uh, if you don't follow Mia, you should because she's special. Uh, at Mia, the little dog. Uh, she's probably the cutest thing you've ever seen, and I'm not biased at all. Um, already answered, who would I play? Um, do you wish you had more scenes? Everybody... Any massive storylines coming up? Yes. Thanks, Tam Lim. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony Robin Chalmers, saying I'm a very talented actor. Uh, <laughs> have I been on any other shows? Yes, quite a few. Um, the first role I got, which was actually my first professional audition for screen, um, was on a show called A Girl's World. The working title was Chatroom Chicks, which makes it sound like something it very much isn't, uh, which is like a, a kid's teen drama which follows uh, three girls, one being uh, the character that's my character's sister, um, and their quests as teenagers to become dancers. And we shot, I shot here in Singapore, but also shot in uh, Germany as well uh, because they could transport through like a Skype type thing. It was quite a fun show. You should look it up. I think it's still being shown all around the world, um, all over the place, called A Girl's World, and I played Josh on that. Um, the other big stuff, really, I've done a whole bunch of Shakespeare stuff on stage, and then um, I'm on Play School in Australia as well as a, as a presenter, so I've done a bunch of episodes on that. Um, I'm not able to film it whilst doing Neighbours because the schedule's just too hectic, um, and Play School works with, basically you do a rehearsal, and then you've got 10 days, and then you film um, one episode in four hours, so it's a really, really, really technically difficult task. Um, 
so all those guys working really hard pulling that show off and then I want another show called The Family Law which just finished its third season so I've shot two seasons of that while shooting Neighbours as well so I've been able to get some time off and had probably the busiest weeks of my life shooting that and Neighbours at the same time um, so you can check all those out um, there's a bunch of others you can just check out my IMDb and you'll see all of those up there uh, thank you Annie Reynolds hello England uh, do Paul and Therese get together after all of this well I don't know but Leo's not happy about it either way um, I think uh, for Paul to do this to Leo, it'd have to, it'd have to be a pretty strong move. Um, that's what I would say to that. Um, hello, Naomi Teal90. Um, say hi to everyone. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of people ask me about Reggie. Gosh, you never know. Mrs. Punt might come back. She might bring, him, bring her back. Um, what's it like playing a gay role? It's like playing a straight role, except I kiss dudes. Um... What else we got? I'm not gay in real life. Um, what else we got going on here? Hello, everybody. There's so many of these little love hearts on the side. It's really fun to watch. Uh, oh, they just went. They just went harder when I said that. Do it again. <laughs> um, what's in Susan and Carl's box under the bed? Oh my, that's that's like an R18 plus rating. I don't know if anyone should ever say that out loud on anything because I think everyone's minds would be far too blown um hello kenny from ireland um just how do you find learning lines uh it's a bizarre thing learning lines i think people underestimate how much they remember on a daily basis we just are asked to do it and when you're asked to remember something it becomes way harder um so I think we just, I think it's a development of a muscle. I think it's, like, even though it's not a literal muscle, it's like a muscle. The more you exercise, the exercise, the easier it is. So if you are wanting to become an actor, oh, look, there's Bethany, looking in the background. <laughs> Clearly she's bored in what I'm saying and she's having to distract herself with stuff in the background. Um, but no, learning lines, uh, yeah, it's like a muscle. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. Obviously on a show like this where we shoot so much, um, it becomes much easier. And it's a big confidence, trust thing. You uh, learn to trust that you'll just know the lines when you get there. And sometimes you don't and you miss something or you screw it up and you can just do it again. It's much easier on set in that way than on stage because I've definitely forgotten lines on stage. <laughs> it's a, a much more awkward situation that you've got to try and work yourself out of. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it is a muscle. It's not something to be worried about. You just do it. Um, the harder part of the job isn't learning the lines it's, uh, or remembering the lines. Rather, it's, uh, it's actually executing the character and taking the audience on the emotional journey that you're trying to communicate. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're an actor and you and you you struggle with that, um, then when you're doing something, don't focus on the lines. Focus on what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to communicate, how you're trying to talk to the person you're talking to, um, and you'll find that the lines just come. Um, yeah. Oh, it's all skipping around. Uh, sorry if I'm missing your questions. It, this thing's like auto scanning, so I can't see everything all at once. Um, is David changed career and what would you like to see him do? Um, well, I'm currently got a hospital lanyard, what's they call it? Hospital lanyard, see, Aaron's hospital. Still in the hospital. I think David's very much um, loves being a doctor uh, and so it is something that he doesn't want to move away from, um, so he'll do whatever he can to stay in the hospital. Um, what else would David be good at? I don't know. You could chuck him in anywhere. It'd be interesting just because of who he is. Um, which is the funniest scene you've had to act on Neighbours? Funniest scene? Oh, there's some fun physical stuff I get to do, which I like. Uh, there was a scene with... David was working out to try and impress Aaron, and there we had, like, this half... Um, what do you call them? Like, b Swiss ball thing, um, which had these ha rubber handles, um, and Leo comes into... It was back when we were, we were living in our own apartment uh, at, the, at Lassiter's, and Leo comes in and the thing goes flying and I flip it around and do this spin thing, um, which I had to do like 10 times and I like, bruised the crap out of my shin doing it. Um, but that was quite funny. That was a fun thing to do. I like being able to do that physical comedy stuff can be really a lot of fun. Um, I, am I coming to England, Jess Pilgrim? Uh, I have been. Look, I might come back again, you know. I think you should just badger these guys to send me over. That'd be, that'd be nice. Um, is the elevator to the penthouse real? No. <laughs> so, so I think one of the things you can find on Neighbours is, especially in the penthouse, which 
really annoys all of us actors. It's meant to be a private penthouse and not everyone should just be able to get there. But whenever a character needs to be there, suddenly they just walk through the elevator doors. It's like you can just hit the button in the elevator and you just go straight to the penthouse and just walk into the other, someone, some person's house. Um, so, you know, that's uh, <laughs> the, penthouse is certainly, the elevator is certainly not real. So when you see the scenes when we're in an elevator, um, there is, we go into an elevator that's on location, like an elevator um, set, and then we stand in the set that's atta- of the elevator that's attached to the penthouse. So we sit there, and then there's like a little screen that changes the numbers on the um, elevator, uh, and then that goes to level eight, and then a ding for the elevator is put in afterwards, and literally someone pulls a rope to open the elevator door, and we walk out, and then it's as if we're in the penthouse. Um, so it works really well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, the elevator is certainly not a real elevator. Um, actually, it'd probably be harder if it was a real elevator because we'd have to time everything perfectly to the elevator arriving at uh, the penthouse. Um, could you insta some pics of the coffee area and the toilets? Why would you want to see the toilets? The toilets look like a toilet. Um, I might towards the end go over and show you the other green room. I'm just in the what's called the quiet, quiet green room, which is really actually quiet um, at the moment. Where am I from originally? Well, I was born in Canberra, and I grew up in Sydney. Uh, but if what you're meaning is what's my heritage, then my dad is from Japan, um, as is Tim Carnos. He's is from his dad's from Japan too. Um, what else we got here? I want to be on a neighbour's so bad. My dream is to be an actor. You just got to put in the hard work. There's no, there's no, there's no special trick or luck. Um, get an agent. Start putting, just start auditioning for stuff. Audition for whatever you can. Do plays. Do short films. Do everything because the more you act, the better you'll get at it. The more opportunities will come up for you. Um, but even for people who do this show and leave here, um, you're back at you're back in the mix of everything, and you could get work immediately. Immediately, like Felix has done great uh, over in the US at the moment. Um, or you could be just auditioning, um, and that's just what happens. I mean, I've had good work in the past and had like a year or so of not really doing all that much, and then you get another gig, and hopefully things snowball, but there's really, the idea of an overnight success is almost non-existent. Um, I think some people get very lucky, but I think there's also been a lot of preparation and work done prior to that, which uh, no one sees and no one's gonna report about. Um, Yeah, so that's always something to remember. Nothing happens by accident. Um, and people don't just get lucky. There is a lot of luck involved in terms of getting roles. Um, That's one thing I'll say for any actors out there is that uh, in terms of your auditioning, if you don't get a role, it doesn't mean you're bad at acting. It just means the role wasn't right for you. They're not, and that's, I was talking to one of the producers here, Nat, um, and I said, what's one thing that you wish actors just knew? And it is that, and she said that it was, she she wished they understood the casting process um, because 99.9% of the time, it's not about whether you can act or not. Um, It is, whether you're right for the role. And um, that's about finding the right person too. And casting is getting so broad now in the sense that um, people are doing what's called self-tapes, which they tape themselves and then send it to the casting peeps, um, which means that they don't actually have to find an actor who can pull off a role. They can actually just do the work to find the person a lot of the time, or at least someone who's who's very uh, intuitive with that character. Um, so it really, really isn't about how good an actor you are a lot of times. Um, it really comes down to uh, just who you are. So um, don't let that turn you off. Uh, if you've gone to heaps of auditions, you haven't got something, everyone's in the same boat. Uh, everyone's having to deal with that. Uh, and we won't. We can't all be right for every role. It's just not possible. Um, yeah. Uh, what part of NZ? Not from New Zealand. Not sure why people think I'm from New Zealand. Tim's from New Zealand. I'm not. Uh, Amy, uh, Zoe's from New Zealand. Um, did, I didn't get to meet Jess Glynn, unfortunately. Um, that would have been really cool because she does some great music. Um, happy birthday to Ethan. I think I already did that. I don't know. There's so many comments, it's very difficult. Um, is Annie coming back to play Jane? I don't know, but it'd be weird if she came back to play anybody else. Um, David need fight... Uh, baby. Um... Sorry, I'm trying to read and talk. Not doing it too successfully. 
Um, do I, do we get much involvement in your in our character storylines? Questions from Tom Griffiths twenty four. Thank you for the question. Um, to an extent, but generally we're actually so busy that um, we don't have a whole lot of time to go and check in. Uh, we try to have a gauge on where things are roughly heading so that we're creating our own character arcs in a way that makes sense. Um, because if we're just sun- if we're suddenly going to um, say if. Aaron and David were to break up in a year's time, um, then Maddie and I then have to do the work to start putting in little subtleties now that create conflict within the relationship. Um, so there's that kind of work you want to be able to do. But most of the time, we're, we're, we're just focusing on tomorrow and trying to get that day done and making sense of, of scenes from scene to scene to scene. Um, but as best we can, we try to stay ahead of things. Um, and if we have any ideas, we can go to the writers or the producers and say, um, I've got this storyline, what do you think? Um, and they can try to put it in. But this is such a complex show um, with 20-something main characters and then um, regular guest stars coming in as well. Um, it becomes insane trying to story plot this show out. So, um, yeah, it's about what they can fit in, what works with the other storylines and how they're going to interconnect and how that impacts other characters. So um, it can be quite intense that way. Uh, what's the temperature that here today? It's like mid twenties, I think. Um, so it's a, it was a little bit cool this morning, but still warm. Um, thank you, Taylor, for being my biggest fan. Um, I'm not getting real life. Uh, there's a lot of the same questions sometimes. I want. I actually wanted to do a, a, a competition to say whoever gets the best question wins something. But maybe they'll do that for the next one. Stealing my ideas. So when they do that next time, you'll know. That was my idea. That's what they should do. Um, do I still see myself staying on Neighbours for a long time? Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, the, as an actor, it's a funny thing um, because Neighbours does offer um, stability and... Um, we do stability, really. Stability and security, which you don't get French in any other capacity as an actor. So um, that can be really great to have. But being an actor also... Um, we've put ourselves out here as uh, we've accepted that we don't have security and safety and that's not why we do acting. We do acting because we can't help it. Um, And that's really the point. We can't help ourselves. And part of that drive, for me at least, is that I want to communicate a whole bunch of different stories. And it's been great doing David and I'll see how long uh, I stay here and how much of his story I need to tell. Um, There's still a lot more of his story, I think, to come. Um, But there's that consistent... Uh, and a constant drive to really want to expand the stories that um, I'm telling. And, yeah, we'll see where that goes. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's just this innate thing, and it's, it's stupid. Like, we've got full-time jobs here, but everyone everyone um, ha- it considers that. You know, how long will I stay, and um, what else could I possibly be doing, and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, but we'll see. Um, I don't know when the end is, but we'll see. Um, what made me do acting? I kind of just covered that then, just, just I, can't, I can't help myself. I, I was pretty good at school and that kind of stuff, so I could have actually gone into a lot of areas, um, like even the one David's doing. But, uh, yeah, it's that thing. Okay, you can't help yourself. Um, you do it because you love it. And really, I, I think part of the thing for me was that I could have done so many things and I wanted to do so many things. And acting was the thing that I looked at and went, hey, I could do all of those things if I was an actor. Um, not, th- I think that was uh, a little bit ignor- ignorant of me to think that I could actually choose to play the roles that I wanted to because I wanted to do that thing. Um, but, uh, but no, I, you know, I, well, I, I ticked off the doctor box now, so that's kind of cool. Um, and I've played a kid a couple of times now, so <laughs> I guess I've done that a few times. Um, how did I get into acting? Loved it at school. Was really lucky to have some amazing teachers there. Um, who kind of fostered a whole bunch of talent. You should all check out if you're in Sydney, Sport for Jove Theatre Company. That's at Sport for Jove, J-O-V-E. Um, they did some incredible work. Uh, and those guys, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Um, thank you for all of the love and appreciation you're throwing at me, guys. Um, really, really love seeing it. Um, can I please say my name? My name! Um, no, Chloe Rose, there you go. Chloe Rose 0414. I wonder what that is that your ATM pin? Is it? <laughs> Did you give that to everybody? Um, favorite scene I talked about earlier. 
Um, so just rewind back later and you can check that out. I talked about David's coming out storyline. Um, did you watch a masalit? What the? <laughs> did I watch the show before you were in it? I don't know what happened to your order correct, but watch a masalit. I don't know what that means. Um, I did when I was younger and I watched it before I was auditioning and stuff, but I, um, I hadn't, I wasn't a regular viewer. No, uh, I am now though. Uh, have you ever found any of the scenes hard to not laugh in? Yeah, that can happen a bit. Um, you can get the giggles a bit. Some actors are worse at it than others. Um, uh, I try to be as good as I can, but sometimes you've just got to let it out at points and then accept that you're laughing and then try to... Because the more you try to stifle a laugh, the more you're going to laugh um, and you're just not going to be able to help it, which makes it fun. Um, how... Be, um, hello, hello, hello. Thank you again. Um, I answered as well, what's it like playing a gay role above? So if you're wondering about that, um, just watch the start of this again. It was, it was pretty early on. Um, in common, do I think I have anything in common with my character? Do you think you have... Oh, you just wrote twice. Um, thank you, Haley Jade. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've got the same face, so that's a start, me and David. Um, I think there, there's a certain amount of... Uh, how we approach things, a rationalisation and an and, and intellectual way of um, responding to situations. I think we're both fairly similar in that. Um, but he is very much more or much less assertive than I think I am at times. Uh, David, which we're, we're starting to discover more, is, is being able to put his foot down a bit. And I'm, 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 that's the direction I'm wanting the character to go a bit. Um, just so you can see him be a bit more active in storylines as opposed to reactive. Um, it'd be nice to see him drive more for something that he wants, um, which is kind of what we're doing at the moment, so stay tuned for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think mostly that kind of thing, but obviously, um, yeah, he's a bit more naive than I would think I would be, or I am, I should say. Um we like to grow my hair longer again. Not at this point. It's long. It's actually long for what it is now. I'm getting a haircut today because this is about three times longer than it should be. Uh, but my hair grows super, super fast. Um, so they've got to cut it every like week and a half for it to. This is only. This is like it was cut two weeks ago. Um, not even. Uh, and it grows back really, really quick. Um, so thank you for that question, Taishi. Um, who else we got here? I'm from England. I've been watching since I was six. I've not missed an episode. Well, thank you for watching since you were six and not missing an episode. Uh, and if you're only six and a half, that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> no, it does. Uh, hello. Uh, do I remember my first day on Neighbours? Did someone take you under their wing? Um, everyone kind of does. Uh, and it's it's such a, a crazy um, thing that... Yeah, you kind of you, you kind of just thrown in the mix of it, and everyone's doing so much. It's um, people are just nice in general. Um, who did I? I think I filmed my first scene with Olympia and Alan Fletcher, so Paige and Carl. Um, I did I did seven or eight scenes on my first day, so I really was thrown in the deep end. Um, and it was all in studio, and studio shoots really quick. We can shoot a scene in like five minutes. Um, but yeah, I, I for that first day, I really put in a lot of work. Um, to really, really know my lines so I wouldn't be worried about that and I could just do the work I wanted to be doing. Um, but it was a lot of fun on that first day. Um, if you could pick someone else's character to play, who would you play? I've answered that um, before as well, so uh, make sure you just go back and watch that again if you want to hear that answer. Um, what am I looking at here? Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, trying to read as much... It's really actually difficult because... You've probably heard this before, but basically it keeps scrolling as people write. So I'm trying to read a question and then it scrolls and disappears and then like 10 more comments have come up. So um, I can't see it. Uh, not coming to the UK anytime in the immediate future, but hopefully again soon. I was there last year. Um, we do do retakes of giggles. We can't have a scene where we're talking about um, something sad and <laughs> we're laughing through it. I don't think it would look very good. Um, I'd make a great doctor in real life. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, when a character leaves, leaves Neighbours uh, uh, When a character leaves Neighbours Are they forced to Or is the actor's choice It can be a bit of both uh, Or it can be just one or the other um, Yeah 
there's there's no real easy answer to that. It's the, there's a whole bunch of reasons why a character might leave. Um, whose neighbor's house would I like to live in in real life? Well, considering the houses are there's the outside of the house, then there's the backyard of the house, and then the inside of the house are all in three different places. I don't think I'd like to live in any of them. It'd be very annoying having to drive five minutes to get to the bathroom from the outside of my house. Um, hello, 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 hello. Um, do you, do I do I think I would get along with David in real life? Oh, and I might need to go on set soon, so um, we'll see. I'll get yelled at. I don't even know what I'm saying in the next scene, so this is going to be fun. Um, <laughs> uh, do I, would I get along with David? I think so. He's a pretty nice guy. Um, yeah, why not? He has, he, yeah, he's, he's the kind of person I think that most people would get along with. Um, most of, oh, he's pretty harmless. Uh, and I'm a person who... Takaya is a person... And by the way, my name is spelled T-A-K-A-Y-A. The H that's in my Instagram is for my last name, which is Honda. Um, so just as a subtle thing, it's just Takaya with no H. So when you're saying hello, just, 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 just as a one-up. Um, if, you, yeah, if you're going to DM me, spell my name right. <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, what was I saying before? I don't even know. Um, you see tonight... Uh, You see mum again. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. She didn't make it to the wedding. Maybe. Um, can I get your autograph digitally? I don't, I don't know how I would do that. Um, you can screenshot this. I'll do that. That's your autograph there. Um, I don't know how to digitally autograph. Um, I will say hi to uh, Javita when she's in next. I love Jo. She's great. Um, she's one of our directors for everyone out there. Um, you like how we call each other boo-boo? Thank you, Ashley. Um, whoa, God, there's so many things going. Um, um, yeah. Keep sending your questions through. I've only got another couple of minutes. Um, uh, Someone's trying to get spoilers out of me. Liv, thank you for all your artwork too. Do you work shop scenes or are they usually just done on set? Um, do we work shop scenes? So we're current, this year we've started a thing doing read-throughs on Monday afternoons. So we're reading scenes that we start shooting next Monday, or next Tuesday actually, um, this afternoon, uh, while shooting, we're in the mix of shooting two blocks at any one time. So we read the next block after those two um, on the Monday. Um, and that we don't really have time. Oh, look, Matt. Matt's telling me I've got to go on. I'll t I can talk to you guys while I walk on. How's that? Um, so we we are working on we workshop scenes after that. We can't. We have time during the read through to actually um, workshop them there because it's six episodes and it takes us like three, two, three hours to read them anyway. We couldn't stop and talk about every scene. Um, but from that, we can then um, we can then uh, just have to hide someone from you. Um, from that, we can then uh, go to the director after that during the week and say, not sure about these things, and then workshop them from there. Me and Maddie do a lot of work with each other um, just on our scenes to make sure that we can get uh, the most out of them and give you guys the best storyline. But I'm literally... Actually, we can walk into the hospital. Why not? Uh, we can show you the crew, the guys who do all of the hard work. We do the easy stuff. We just walk on and get our faces painted to make us look pretty. So here we are in the hospital slash school. So I don't know if you guys have been shown this stuff. Um, I don't even know how well the internet connection is going to stay up here. But this is the hospital, so reception's here. Um, as you can see, there's no ceiling. Um, what can I look at to show you? So, over here, you can see it's a school on one side, and then it's my office on the other. Um, and all of these walls, so this wall isn't even the wall here, uh, they flip around. So I think on this side, you can see the school lockers, but there's also a hospital bed in here. So they can flip this wall around and then it's a hospital room. And then when they want the other side of the hallway to be the school, they flip this around and then the lockers are outside. So it's a really clever set. Um, and so this is the hospital. But I think I have to go. So thank you for joining us. Um, 
like my Instagram at Takaya T A K Y H, um, and chat to me there. But thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.